Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season finale of Pandora. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, obviously we pick up with the whole Osborne and Meredith situation. That obviously, she's not listening to him, but obviously we learned last episode that she was a spy and not her sister. So Osborne killed his sister, I mean his wife, for nothing. But then it's the whole thing of like, she's trying to be like, oh, you just want to keep your position he's like no because i didn't want her to get dragged through a trial where it's like everyone like finding out she was working secretly for zatar she would have gotten run through the ringer especially because at that time they were in their heat of the war with zatar so it's like things would have kind of come down the book would have gotten thrown at her super hard which is also even effed up now meredith is so nonchalant about i mean it was your sister but you know i guess that shows i mean maybe there's something deeper there maybe maybe not but um Basically, we kind of find out that Meredith, like her partner playing all this, that basically she wants to set up Donovan to take the fall for basically starting a war with the Sumis. Because basically she's saying like the reason why she turned against Earth is because Earth is kind of the weakest link in this situation. And Zatar is going to be like the stronger power. So I think it's like siding with the winners of all this. Because Earth is still like the Earth, like the Outer Rim situation is happening. And Earth is kind of powerless to stop a lot of that. So it's like... Why side with them? So why why not side with Zatar? Which I'm thinking like with Zatar. I mean that's why they didn't get it because I was like, why are you gonna be? I guess like maybe any survivors of everything. Like I guess the humans that submit will work. Be part like that's why I'm like Zatar's planning on trying to. They want maybe they don't necessarily want Earth 100 percent destroyed. You think they would, but maybe it's just about getting them back in power so that they can basically make Earth submit to them. So that's why my, I guess Meredith's like, oh, I'm going to be in a better off position than anyone else on Earth. Maybe that's, I don't know. It just seemed like they wouldn't care for you either being a human, but who knows? And then we kind of cut that back and forth between what's happening on Zatar with uh, Xander and Tierney, and we kind of find out that her um, sister, one of her sisters, is involved. Um, I'm already blanking on her name. They said it in the episode, too. It was something with a... Uh, I'm already blinking on her sister's name, uh, which is kind of sad because it's like, hey, this is the first appearance of the season. Oh, she's dead. Oh, that's I didn't expect that because it turns out she's the one that's more so than anything trying to frame Parallax because she wants to make, you know, it's like their dad's all about, you know, how he's kind of done things. It's kind of because she was always looked down upon as the sister that just wasn't like, you know, um, kind of looked at as the weakest link of the family so she wanted to prove herself by like framing her dad so when everything shit goes sideways parallax gets blamed at the end of it all she gets to rise to power and gets to take over the company because basically she wants this war to escalate to the point it's like oh lo and behold we parallax the weapon dealers are going to be here passing out weapons and parallax is going to make a killing on this with her at the helm and then, obviously, Zatara is going to sit on the sidelines while, like, the Sumis and Earth and everybody... Well, it was more so about, well, the Sumis and also, like, the um, people from the Outer Rim, like, did, like starting a war so that, like, Zatar can watch on the outsides and then be, you know, slowly build their army back up until they're ready, I guess, to fully strike back against Earth and everybody and kind of be dominant in the universe, I guess, is their plan. But um, that was interesting. I didn't even think about this until I saw it in this episode because I was like, right, that is kind of interesting that, like, your half-sister, because obviously they have different moms, don't all three of them have different moms? Because doesn't Regan have a different mom from her the other sister? and Because obviously Eva's is Tierney's mom, Odessa's, but it's like, what in... I don't know, maybe they, maybe Regan and her have the same mom, I don't know, no, I de definitely know Tierney obviously has, you know, Eva's a mom, so, but regardless, your sister and or half-sister was... Uh, dated your mom's other daughter, your pseudo sister, which is kind of interesting. I, like I said, I didn't think about it until she popped up in the episode. Um, but uh, yeah, she stabs Tyranny, but they end up taking everyone else out with Zion's help, and Tyranny proceeded to kill her sister. So I was like, oh, your sister literally made an appearance in the episode just to die. That was interesting. That's got to be leave you with some complicated feelings because, well, to be fair, your sister tried to kill you first. I mean, she's kind of got no love lost when it comes to her family just because, like, well, she talks about the fact is that she was always kind of seen as a little bit of an outsider. Uh, I guess I completely forgot about that angle that, like, how she looks now is tyranny isn't how she really looks. She's basically in a, a different body. Because I was like, because she was saying, like, she was the third. I was like, wait, you're the youngest? You look like you're the oldest of the siblings. But it's like, no, it's because she's in a, a different body. Like, obviously, um, 
where she met up with uh gosh she said their name too um was it the Hyperia Hypatian? Oh, like I said, I'm blanking on it. The, the group she mentioned that she was a part of, that obviously we met her through in season one. Wasn't that a Hypatia Syndicate? Wasn't that it? Hypatian Syndicate? I think that was what she was saying, if I remember correctly. Um, that she got a new body from that. So it was, obviously it's a no love loss because her dad always looked like she was kind of an annoyance. So that's why she kind of got away as far as away from that family as she could. Which is so interesting considering like her dad... Their, her dad at the end was like, oh, yeah, my daughter, Odessa, she's back to me, and blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, your daughter kind of has no love when it comes to you. Um, how you kind of win, how he handles things and who he is. She has no love lost when it comes to her sisters. I mean, to be fair, I'm curious how Regan's going to feel about finding out your um, your other sister's dead. I mean, it was your other sister that did it, too. But, I mean, to be fair, Regan's got to get her own issues being locked up. So, I'm sure that's got its own complicated feelings because it's your dad and your other sister responsible. You know, so. So, there's that. Um, Zion got taken to Xander's mom. I'm curious, like, what's going to happen on that front? With uh, Xander bringing his brother there. Because obviously it's like his mom had kind of... Gi- their mom had kind of given up. Like after... She just kind of fell apart. Like after what happened to him. And also Xander signing up. It would have felt like... In a way she already kind of lost her other son. But I think for Xander it's just... His mom was so lost after uh, Zion died. That like... This was their opportunity to... Um, his opportunity to kind of bring some life... It seemed like he was able to breathe some life back into her. So it's like... Zion you stay here. Look after Tierney. Um... That's why, because Tierney talks about the fact is it's actually because of her upbringing, because of the way her dad and her sisters treated her. Like, that's why she's kind of grown up a little cold-hearted, as she has. So that's why she's all about using that option of um, the weapon. But obviously Xander's, like, believe in Jax. But obviously for Tierney, she can't. But she's like, you know, it's it's not the easiest thing carrying that burden of becoming something you don't want to. Because in um, his case, it's like... You're going to have to sit with the fact is that you are going to be wiping out another species if it comes down to it. So, you know, have to live with, like, genocide on your soul, you know? At the same time, we got your boy Roy coming back. And just why I didn't expect to see Roy. I was like, yeah, yeah, Roy. And he ends up picking him up. And it's like, yo. It's like, hey, Jet. Hey, uh, Raylan. And Raylan's like, no, no, no. And then he gets introduced to Zazzy. And Jackson's like, are all the Earth women this beautiful? Holy shit. Hey, where's my man, main man Xander? I was like, hey. And yeah, I like that. Um, then also explaining to him, he's like, whoa. So all this shit's going now? Especially because him, he's kind of got that little bit of a hero complex. He wants to kind of be a hero, the great Captain Roy and everything. Um... I'm sure, like, once again, uh, last time we saw him, once again, he had, like, Black Lightning. Like, he had comic books, so he's on that superhero shit, you know? Uh, but then we get introduced to the actual Bertha. Uh, she's a different species for him. And it's actually kind of a sweet story finding out, like, oh, she he found her egg and brought her home and just, like, didn't tell his family until she was actually born. But it's, like, you know, because it's, like, he brings up, because of Xander and Zion, it actually made him want to rekindle things between him and his sister. And obviously for Jack, she's looking at this, it's like, holy crap, like, in this moment we have at least some of the, the species in this universe here, you know. So it's, like, she's, like, thinking maybe there was a reason for that. And so Raylan's, like, well, why don't we go with you to meet the ancient? She's, like, no. After what happened to Mata, she didn't want to take the chance. But uh, Raylan's, like, it's our choice what to do because you can't do this on your own because obviously she wants to shoulder this burden because she, obviously she still doesn't know what to say. But obviously we've seen the inspiration between Jet and Raylan and now, you know, Roy and his sister. So, and then, you know... There's a whole situation with Osborne, which he was about to be put in that situation where it's like, oh, I'm going to basically be the starting point for a war. And lo and behold, who's there uh, to save his hide? None other than Harlan, because it makes sense. Harlan has been watching this situation. Once again, I thought that was so interesting because I thought maybe there was something there considering how Meredith was all like pro team Harlan for most of the season but then like her doing all that stuff last episode but we saw Harlan was watching so he's had an eye on this situation so I wonder makes you wonder did he know of his daughter other daughter's treachery regardless the fact of the matter is he helps uh Osborne out it's like yeah but when it's all said and done you're gonna have to come work for me fine sure whatever and luckily averts the war meets up with Jax and the others um but lo and behold who meets up with them also um Aleka uh, because Jax had called her there, so it's like now she has a representative from all the races. Technically, she does because like the seashell gives her like for all the sixth race. So now it's like all the races have been get met up together, and it's like yeah, reunited. Hey, Xander's here. Where you been this entire time? Well, we don't have time for that. 
bam, lo and behold, Meredith shows up just in time to kill um, Aleka. And it's like, are you doing it just because she's assuming me or what? Because I guess because it's like, oh, you're here with her. You're all triggers. That's what's like so interesting because it's like you're making it seem like why put up. I mean, I guess you need the pretenses to get everyone else on your side. But it's like. That's why I don't get, like, why... Because she doesn't believe in all this, so I guess she feels like Jax is a, um... A thorn in her side that could be, like, oh, like, I guess technically, like, Jax is a good guy, so, like, she could uh, foil my, my plans. So but I was like, you you don't believe in any of this, so why does it matter? So, but sadly, um... Aleka dies, which is a bummer. It's like, hey, Jax needed her, and it's like, this is her friend, her sister... And she died. Uh, luckily, they took care of Meredith. I was like, oh, Meredith's super dead just like that? I don't know if that's what that's implying, like, it, whether that's what that implied. Maybe it, I think it did, but uh, regardless, because of it, like, Jack's kind of lost all faith. And then she's kind of blaming Xander, like, you weren't here when I needed you. He's like, trust me, I was, you know, and it's obviously he doesn't, because he doesn't want to tell her why he left. Because if he did, that kind of shows he didn't have faith in her and she's not really in the best spot right now anyway. The um, the the seashell thing ends up disappearing because she no longer had that faith that she was holding on to about all the races. So it's like, what are you going to do? She's like, I can't hide from the um, the ancient, so I'm gonna go ahead. But Xander ends up knocking her out because it's like I I gotta handle this myself and pulls out the weapon. Which Raylan's like, don't do this. The fact of the matter is like believe in Jax, but it's like she hasn't. She doesn't have any belief, and if she tries to go in front of the ancients again, they're not going to believe her because she's filled with doubts now. So he's like, this is the only option, which leads to a, a battle between him and Raylan. Obviously, Jack gets in the middle of it to stop Raylan from doing what he's doing. Sad that, uh, you know, they're such good buddies, and obviously they have to turn on each other in this situation. But Raylan feels the need he has to stop um, Xander from doing something that he'll regret. Which will kind because of, it's like once again he brings up the situation of how do you know that will actually work on the ancients? But it's like we don't really have much other choice at this point in time. So he has Osborne come down with the uh, box and puts um, her in it. And obviously for Osborne, it's like I know I might have been rough, you know, I pushed you hard in the, in, in the past. But he's like, no, Xander's kind of like I get it. Everything you did was to kind of prepare me. You might have been a little rough around the edges, but also, you know, Osborne is like, I never wanted to put you in this position where obviously having to make such a hard choice to basically turn on Jacks like this and basically be responsible for wiping out a species. Granted, a species about to wipe you out, but still, you're planning on wiping out another species. So, but as he's going in there, someone pops up and is like, will you? Are you willing to make any sacrifice if it means saving the universe? And he's like, yeah, and restoring Jacks. Hope and I was like, is that another Pandora? And they travel back in time, and I was like, what? So lo and behold, he gets another shot of it. They save um, Elica. I mean, Aleka, because I want to say, regardless, they meet with the ancients, and everyone gives their peace. Like, obviously, Bertha says what she needs to say. Jet says what she needs to say. So does Raylan. Then also um, Aleka. So like all these different species speaking. And then, obviously, it's like, you have everything you need. So, the sixth one says that she kind of agrees with um, what has been said. So, ancients are like, hey, all right. The fact of the matter is, for now, we will give you a chance. Basically, coming down to the fact is that no species is perfect. But giving us a gift, it might not just be tomorrow, but look at how much progress we're able to make. You know, how, you know... Bertha's like, I was saved by a, um, a human, someone from a different race, and now that makes her want to, you know, spread that and kind of connect with other races. Obviously, Aleka's and, you know, Jax's relationship, but, and, you know, Raylan as well, and, you know, Jet, you know, where him and Raylan are, you know, and so all this is combined to be like, hey, all right, we'll come back basically in another millennia to kind of check on our verdict on this, you know, to check and see if it's all through, but it's like, uh, but because of that, there has to be a price to pay for it, and uh, Jax has to say here, which obviously um, Xander wasn't about that, but it's like, you, and they even say, did you say you were willing to pay any price? And it's like, oh, so they were aware of what was going on. So, like, even the time travel stuff doesn't escape them. They're beyond that, where it's like, oh, oh, we see there's some time travel stuff there. All right, you know, so, and I, I guess that, I guess it's a loophole, or maybe they're referencing a different time, but it seemed like they were specifically referencing what happened with Xander when he made that deal. So I'm like, I don't know. 
Maybe it's like, well, it's kind of a loophole and it's kind of a cheat away to, or kind of cheating to do that. But hey, I guess at the end of the day, like, you know, it's like the opportunity that faith was stolen from them rather than like uh, her not having it. It was stolen from her. So it's a little, I guess they've kind of let that slide. But um, Xander having to leave her behind. And obviously, um, Aleka is saying that she's going to go back to, to Sumi and try and change how everything come, has worked till now. Like, try to maintain peace with all the races like Jax would want. And obviously, for Xander, it's like, she believed in you, so I believe in you. So, everybody, you know, meets, well, lo and behold, who's in front of them, Meredith. So, hey, in this timeline, you didn't die. Cool. Uh, but luckily... Um, the masked figure, well, the skies figure comes, kicks some serious ass, and it's like, alright, like, everyone go back to the ship, and it's like, who is this? It's like, it's like, it's gotta be another Pandora, obviously, but then he's like, oh, that portal took you back in time, and it's like, I was like, right, I was so stupid, because it's been like two episodes, let's not forget, I was like, right, before he said it, it was like, bloom. Because I forgot, like, we saw that she went back in time. And she, and that's, so, that's an interesting way to get to really know your mom. It's like, basically, you go back in time and you watch her life from the sidelines. So, basically, she's been watching Jax the entire time, like, over the course of everything from season one, everything from season two. So, it's an interesting way to really get to know your mom. So, we figured that out from two days episodes ago, but it didn't click on my head. to think, oh, yeah, that's Bloom. Because she is special in, you know, what, once again, she's doing shit that no other Pandora can do. Like, no other Pandora's that display the ability she has. So, she's always been a special case. So it's like, you know, Xander's like, what are you going to do? Like, you could always come with us. She's like, yeah, but, you know, maybe some other point in time. But, like, right now, Earth isn't my home. I'm going to explore the stars. But she's like, what about you? And for Xander, it's like, I've spent so much of my life following someone else's orders. I think it's time I just kind of live my life on my own, you know? So you have them kind of saying goodbye. You have Osborne going to meet up with, um, with, uh, what's his face? Uh, Harlan, because it's like, well, I'm a man of my word, so I'll meet up with him. Even a, even if a man like him is kind of despicable and doesn't keep his word, I got to keep mine. So what that turns into is going to be interesting. Um, Raylan trying to ease Xander's pain, and Xander understands, doesn't mean that he has to like the circumstances. And lo and behold, who's there? Tierney, because now, because of everything being settled, there are no more portals, so no more cheating that. But now it's like, well, I don't know where my mom is, so I need your help tracking her down. And I guess... You know, considering everything that they've just recently went on, their misadventures last episode, plus plus this episode, plus you are related. I mean, this is also Jax's mom, so I'm sure that's even more motive. But um, at the end, we have Meredith as well as um, as well as Raylan's dad saying, like, basically surrender. You've got nowhere else to run. So it's like, obviously, they're kind of wanted fugitives. So it's like, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to keep fighting until... Uh, so now, I guess, because obviously, um, Zazzy went off with Roy and Bertha. And it's like, well, I'll be back in time for fall. But now this group is fugitives. It's like, man, how much time do you... Have? Like, season one's the only season where we got to see them really, really enjoy the school life. Ever since then, it's just been space adventure so that's kind of interesting so i don't expect you guys to ever go back to being regular students beyond this so now i'm assuming you take this as them being on a run um Jax did meet up with Mata, so I think that is kind of the bonus, the benefit of that, where it's like Mata doesn't have to be here alone. Jax is there with her, so that she's not dead, but at least she's stuck there. So I'm thinking we probably won't see Jax anymore. Like if we do see another Pandora, it's probably just going to be Bloom filling that role from now on. Potentially, I I don't, I don't know. I'd, I'd be so curious to see what that things go. Plus, once again, like there's a whole Xander and his uh, brother Zion, be, that whole clone situation. It's like. What's that going to turn into? Um, then potentially being on a run. What's that look like? I'd assume that have something to do with them crossing paths with Harlan. Because obviously Harlan... I mean, let's not forget, there's also still the weapon. Like, I don't think it ever got... I mean, not less when they got ported out, it got destroyed. But it's like... Ray, I mean, um, Xander still has that, right? Because let's not forget, Harlan wants that weapon. So that could potentially be a thing. Obviously, they've got Tyranny on their side, so that'd be kind of an interesting new dynamic of having her around a lot more, you know, potentially what that could mean, and oh, I'd be curious to see how they would handle that. Oh, yeah, I also can't forget the whole Shrawl situation, which is interesting, because it's interesting, because, um, Meredith had kind of made it clear, like, last episode, she's like, basically, you're not who you think you are, 
And I thought that was kind of interesting because I was like, because now in retrospect, it's like, well, you're working with Zatara, so why would you warn him? It almost seemed like you felt bad for him. Maybe she does. But obviously, it's like when he was being tortured for information about Pandora, they kind of broke his mind and made him a sleeper agent unaware. All the stuff that um, Meredith was saying was basically happening with her sister kind of was happening to Shrawl this entire time. So no telling what he's been reporting back the entire time. Probably everything that they've been up to. Um, probably everything Jax was up to, so, I'm curious to kind of see in the long run where all this kind of go, like, obviously we have, or now it's like, so I'm curious to see how this plays out, now that they've stopped the universe from being destroyed, but all the issues that were already there still are there, so it's like, they're going to be hunted down by criminals, and obviously, this pretense of joining forces with Zatar, and, well, not less, it's just Earth Force coming after them, because it's like, oh, you're, well, I don't know. Like I brought up earlier, like maybe they're gonna all be working with um, uh, Harlan. I, I I don't know what they really kind of potentially make of what that would mean going forward. But you know, I'd be interested to see. At the time of me recording this, Pandora hasn't been renewed or canceled. So I I hope it comes back for a third season because I'd be interested to see like where the story would go from here. Like I said, like, would we see Jax return or would it just be simply like Bloom will pop back in his story and kind of fill that role? I mean, obviously maybe we get to see some of her adventures. Also, once again, there's so many storylines that were dropped from season one and I'm like, certain characters, maybe there's reasons why certain characters, maybe actors didn't want to return, but it's like, what about Tom and, uh, I want to see, oh God, I'm blanking on her name. The Cone Girl, like, you know, I mean, granted, we know that she's back home kind of working things on that front. I think, if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I saw season one, but it's like, Tom was with her, wasn't he? I mean, because there's also, like, the whole storyline with Tom's dad that, like, that got dropped. So, like, I wonder, was this kind of, like, soft rebooted? Kind of like how season two of Batwoman kind of is in, in that same regard? Which is weird to say that because we know that, but we haven't actually seen it because obviously season two doesn't ever to next month. But I'm wondering, is it something more along those lines? Because I, I might have brought it up earlier this season, but it was like, yeah, we're just kind of dropping a whole bunch of swords. I mean, granted, they had dropped the Greg thing and they brought that back. But I'd be curious to see if anything else on that other front happens or, you know, do they just go, nah, we're just keep trudging along. Uh, it's kind of interesting. It's like, obviously, like everything that... Like I said, all the ancient stuff that's dealt with, you know, don't have to worry about that. Now we just have to worry about, you know, the issues. It's so interesting because Jax was able to give, like, the universe extra time, you know, to grow. And it's like, oh, well, all this is going down. But I guess, you know, that's part of the process. Like, oh, until they're able to stop all this stuff, like, all of the, you know, different species can't fully coexist. So. Regardless of it, like I said, it's, I, I hope the show comes back for a third season because I'd love to see what they do with a third season. What storylines, uh, where all these storylines will take us. But really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love light to the force, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.